to the Irresistible Marketing Pod, the podcast that teaches you how to tap into your emotional power to create magical, magnetic marketing. I'm your host, Issa Gauchi, marketing confidence cheerleader and owner of the M. Issa Messaging Digital Marketing Agency. One of my most frequently asked questions for folks coming to me for marketing help is how much of your personal story should you share in your marketing? The short answer is however much you want to, but there is a lot of nuance to this. Let's get into it. Vulnerability has been having quite a moment. From Brene Brown breaking down how there is no courage without vulnerability and no creativity without failure, to RuPaul telling the queens that showing vulnerability helps the audience fall in love with them, to the topic of a thousand marketing conference keynotes, We are really getting the message that vulnerability is relatable, vulnerability is lovable, and vulnerability makes for great storytelling. What's less clear is what is the right amount of vulnerability when marketing your business? What do you need to include because it's essential to your brand, and what's just TMI? Let's walk through some things to consider when deciding what to share and what to keep to yourself when marketing your business. So first off, let me state clearly that you have every right to privacy. No one is entitled to your story. What you share or don't share is entirely up to you. Here are some excellent reasons to keep a part of your story private. One. It causes you great pain to speak or think about it. Two, you're still processing it. Three, speaking up could harm you or others. Four, it has no impact on your business values, how you conduct business, or who you want to serve. Five, you don't feel ready. And six, you don't want to. You don't need any more reason than that. The only person who needs to decide whether your reason is good enough to keep something private is you. But before you slink silently away, let's walk through why you might want to consider sharing vulnerable parts of your personal story and your marketing. First off, let me point out that it's easier to care about a human than it is to care about a brand. Citizens United notwithstanding, corporations are not people. They don't have bodies, nervous systems, childhood traumas, hopes, dreams, feelings, mental health struggles, pain, and joy the way we humans do. In other words, a brand is way less relatable than a person. This is why influencer marketing is a thing. This is why celebrities have wildly successful corporate ventures and why Rihanna could literally tell me to buy anything and I absolutely would. People are very susceptible to suggestion from the people they admire. This is also why any marketer worth their salt is going to be on you to get testimonials and other forms of social proof because customers are inherently suspicious of marketing. They are much less likely, or excuse me, they are much more likely to trust a person's personal recommendation. If you want customers to relate to your brand, you have to give them someone to relate to. Often, that someone has to be you, my dear small business owners, especially if you're in coaching or consulting or another service-based business where clients will be interacting with you directly. So, you do need to share enough for ideal customers to recognize themselves in your offer, in your brand, and opt in. Often, Vulnerable aspects of our personal stories are what motivated us to found our own businesses in the first place. Not sharing your why makes that origin story a lot less compelling. It also makes it harder for the people who are best suited to be served by you to recognize that you can help them. Here are some examples of how powerful founders have shared their personal experiences to build community with people going through something similar. The Ad Girl's mission to put more money into the hands of more women has all the more emotional resonance when you learn of co-founder Jennifer Spivak's journey from domestic abuse survivor to CEO of a wildly successful all-female ad agency. 
Oh, and they donate 5% of their profits to Free From, which helps domestic abuse survivors achieve financial stability so that they can leave and never go back. Spivak's openness helps other women with similar stories feel safe working with her and in, and eager to support her endeavors. And apologies if I said that last name wrong. In another example, Victoria Albina's openness about her own years of struggle with codependency and people-pleasing make the advice on her feminist wellness podcast uniquely encouraging, relatable, and without a hint of judgment. Clients feel confident enough that she understands their struggles and will respond to them with compassion to make a substantial investment to work with her. And one of my favorite clients, Vigor Roots, uh, Vigor Roots founder Nat- Nathalie DeRose's forthrightness about her own past struggle to grow healthy hair after years of damage from chemical relaxers has earned her a dedicated community of followers. Her DMs are full of pictures of scalp conditions, thinning edges, and traction alopecia sent along with requests for advice. Even if no other hair growth treatment has worked for them before, people are willing to incorporate Vigor Roots Root 22 Serum into their daily routines because they trust the results DuRose and her scores of happy customers have shared. Do you think they'd feel comfortable DMing a picture of their bald spot to someone who never admitted to experiencing hair thinning themselves? Probably not. Sometimes. Oftentimes, people need to understand that you've been where they are now before they believe that you can help them. Look, if you opened a business because you know how to alleviate the pain of something you've experienced yourself, then you, yes you, could be a great beacon of hope for those going through that same pain right now. And never forget that hope is incredibly powerful. You surviving you thriving helps your people understand that they can too and that and that is a really strong motivator to want to work with you to buy your product to follow your work to amplify your reach and talk you up to their friends and part of this is that when you share vulnerable parts of your story you invite community with other people who have experienced the same thing And community is something that many of us, most of us crave. When people are struggling with a problem that makes them feel alone, finding community that can empathize, relate to, and support them is incredibly healing. By sharing your story, you can create that community. When you share your story, you inspire others to share theirs. And these stories help those struggling in silence to find you and reach out. Your story can launch more than just a sale but an entire movement. And to sum up, sharing invites caring. So, in conclusion, here are some reasons you might want to consider sharing a vulnerable aspect of your personal story in your, in your small business marketing. One, it motivated you to start the business. Two, it's the reason behind your mission and values. Three, It's why you conduct business in a certain way. Four, your ideal customers are going through a similar struggle. Five, your perspective can help others going through the same thing. Six, community is needed for those who have gone through it or are currently going through it. Seven, you can speak about it without your mental health suffering. Your story is so powerful. Don't let shame be the thing that stops you from using it. All right. I hope you got something out of that episode. Please DM me, love DMs. Let me know what you thought of this episode. And if you are ready for your marketing to stop feeling so emotionally fraught, If you want to have a never-ending flow of creativity and confidence so that you can show up, make offers, and get sales, join me for Club Content Cauldron, a four-week creative container this March 2023 designed to get your marketing poppin'. In this supportive and festive creative community, you'll get marketing support, cheerleading, and a whole host of friends to inspire you celebrate the marketing you create, and give you expert feedback to hone your messaging, but only when you want it. 
Oh, and there are prizes and optional dress themes. It's a whole month's worth of your best marketing ever and cheerleading and creative community for only a $249 investment. This is one of the most accessible ways to work with me. And when you sign up, you will be gifted my tarot spreads for confidence and creativity and be admitted to the Private Club Content Cauldron Facebook group where you can start asking me questions and getting expert marketing feedback on your content right away. So you could technically make back your investment in the group many times over before we even start to meet. To learn more about Club Content Cauldron, hit up the link in the show notes, and feel free to reach out with any questions. That's all for today. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode. It means so much to have you here. If you enjoyed this podcast and would like to keep them coming, please consider leaving a five-star review on Apple Podcasts to help others find this fabulous free resource. Keep up with all things irresistible marketing by following at M-I-S-A messaging on Instagram and signing up for our newsletter at M-I-S-A messaging.com. And you can follow me on Instagram at marketing confidence director. All right. Love you. Bye.